Morning. Ooh, I'm tripping over here. Let's go. Woo! Yes, sir. Come on in, come on in. Let's see what's going on here. Huh? Yeah. Let's get on frequency. Put your nines up. Uh huh. Shout out to Yolanda. I see you. First nine in the building. Yes, sir. Shannon. Grand Rising. Put your nines up. Let me know where you're from. I see you, South Dallas. I see you, Texas. Bruce Williams. Grand Rising King. Big Woo. Dre Lee. Grand Rising. Grand Rising. Denise Darlington. I'm with you, Queen. Thank you for being here. Grand Rising. Grand Rising. Dwayne Montag. What's up, brother? Ashe. Stephanie Cook. How we feeling? How we feeling? And hi, it's Nikki. You made it. You made the cut, baby. <laughs> Grand Rising, Queen. Grand Rising. It's that time. Let's get on vibration. I hope you got your bracelets on. I know some of you received them over the past couple of days. Let's get in close here so y'all guys can see me. Let me. Make sure that people can see me now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's Sigi Tolo, Panther Party. That music in the background. Can't stand it. Man, that boy spitting on there. He got some conscious music on there. I want to show, his, show him some support. Uh, those of you who would like to get that... Uh, that EP I'd like to get that album I believe uh, we get a discount for utilizing the lighthouse information as a code uh, Sigi if you're in the room you can go ahead and put that information down there I'll also put it in the feed uh, we're going to be getting into some some special things today but before we do that make sure you hit the thumbs up button make sure you hit the subscribe button and the little bell so you can get the subscription subscriptions and the notifications of when we're having our uh, sessions 9 a.m. every morning Monday through Friday all right so, what we want to cover today, we want to cover giants. We want to cover giants. Before we begin, assalamu alaikum, shalom, imhotep, family. Thank you for being here. Giants, 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 giants. I love this subject. Why? Because there's 
there's layers. I like anything with layers. I like things that are multi, I should say, multi-layered. And when we're dealing with giants, we're dealing with multi-layers. They, I mean, they really cleverly finessed this giant situation as far as the information that we are able to receive and what we're able to render. Okay? So, when we're talking about giants, <clears throat> this story you can find in the biblical text. You can find this in pretty much all walks of life, whether it be mythological um, and even current day to day. Okay. I like to reference the biblical text because a lot of people here in America like to utilize that as law uh, and they like to speak literally of a lot of things that may not necessarily be supposed to be taken literal. Now, in the past, I've already told you when we deal with the biblical text that we're dealing with allegory, metaphorical principles, we are dealing with the sun book, uh, we're dealing with, you know, um, things that may not necessarily are supposed to be taken literal. OK, and where the uh, the story of giants comes into play uh, is several times in, in the biblical text where it references it, where it talks about David and Goliath. Uh, where it uh, where it talks about uh, in the beginning, well, I should just go to verse right here. It talks about the the Nephilim, the giants, the fallen ones, right? And it starts off by saying, "There were giants in those days," right? This is this is Genesis six four. It says there were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bore children to them. The same became mighty when which were of old men of renown. Okay. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. That is Numbers 13, 33. Okay. So now. You guys know I always like to um, I always like to break down stuff. I always like to break it down. Um, when we're dealing with anything in biblical text, we have to deal with its original word. Okay, who wrote it, right? And the context of which it was written in. Okay, so let's deal with the word giant for a second. Let's deal with the word giant, right? <clears throat> the word giant as we know it here in America. We're, you, we're usually referring to um, something large, right? It's a giant, right? When we say a giant, we think of a really large human being, you know? He was, he was a giant. Like when we look at David and Goliath, this guy was massive. We think of him as somebody that's like, you know, 12 feet tall, you know, 15 feet tall, whatever have you, okay? But I think it's important that we look at the word giant and define these things, right? It says giant, an imaginary or mythical being of human form, but superhuman size. Okay, he's super, he's colossal, right? Mammoth, monster, right? Leviathan, Titan, all these things, giantess. But there's something cleverly hidden here. You want to look at the second definition, which is highlighted, and it says astronomy. It says a star of relatively great size and luminosity compared to ordinary stars of the main sequence and 10 to 100 times the diameter of the sun. Wow. Wait a minute now. Wait a minute. You can use the word giant for damn near anything. You can say a giant chair, right? A giant house, a giant car, right? A giant book. But when we look up the definition of the word giant, they chose to use astronomy in relative to the stars. Why? Why astronomy? Out of all of the branches of all the sciences, why did they choose to use astronomy to reference the word giant? Some of you probably with a third eye have already figured this out. Etymology destroys everything. The word giant at its origin, once again, is Greek. It comes from the word gigas, a gigant. Okay? We're dealing with Greek words. 
So when we're dealing with a giant, we have to understand that a giant and a Nephilim are two totally different things. A giant and a Nephilim are two totally different entities. But they've usurped the word giant and make you think that they were synonymous with a Nephilim. Are you getting me? This is where transliterations of the Bible become dangerous. This is where it becomes dangerous. Because now we think anytime that they reference the word giant, we're talking about a human. When in actuality, they could be referencing a star. In which I've already told you, the Bible is a book about the sun. Which is what? A star. The sun book. Specifically, we're talking about a giant. We're talking about Goliath. Let's deal with Goliath. Do you know that there is a star called Goliath? Did you know that there is a Goliath star? Let's get into it. Guess what a Goliath star looks like? If you've been on this feed long enough, you probably already put the answer in the feed. This is a Goliath star, family. That's the Goliath star. Can you count how many sides there are on a Goliath star? If you know how many sides there are and you can count, please put that in the feed. How many, how many sides are on a Goliath star? <laughs> oh, you're going to get this work today, baby. You're going to get this work today. Huh? How many sides are on the Goliath star? <laughs> Put your nines up. No pun intended. <laughs> Put your nines up. <laughs> oh, man, yo. Oh, man. They giving you sacred geometry. Huh? They're giving you the stars, man. That's what this book is about. I don't care which story that you want to pull out. <laughs> it's always going to lead you back to the cosmos. Okay? I don't know how many different ways I got to give it to y'all. It's always going to lead back to the cosmos. That number nine is a bad man. Huh? A giant star. Oh, it's listed. A giant star is a star with substantially large radius and luminosity than a main sequence or dwarf star of the same surface temperature. They lie above the main sequence luminosity class, what is that, four? I can't see, five in the Yerkes, in the Yerkes spectral classification on the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram and correspond to luminosity classes two and three. All right. All right. So now you know what you're dealing with when you're dealing with a Goliath. A Goliath is a star. And it's only coincidental that the Goliath was lined up with a smaller version of himself, both warriors. David would have represented the dwarf star. The dwarf. Huh? A smaller star. Let's look up the word dwarf. It's no coincidence that dwarf, they use astronomy as well in the second definition of what a dwarf is. When we think of dwarfs, we think of small human beings because that's what you were taught. But that's not what it was by definition originally. The first science was astronomy. Are you with me? The first science was astronomy. A dwarf, a star of relatively small size and low luminosity, including the majority of main sequence stars. Germanic. Germanic came after Greek. You understand? They're giving you a chain of command here. See, it's not a coincidence that David took five stones to defeat Goliath. 
He took five stones. Right? So you say, okay, well, where's the number five coming to play with all of this? Right? We understand that a nanogram or a star with nine sides, with nine flashes of radiant light, has a counterpart. And if you study my main man that I told you to study, which was Nikola Tesla, right? You would understand by now the power of the three, six, and the nine. He understood Kemet very well. One of the very few white men that I respect as far as knowledge, right? Even though he took a lot of it and patented it, he laid it down. He was honest, and that's why they don't want to give him no glory. Nikola Tesla, he explains the power of the three, six, and the nine, right? In the biblical text, you'll find a lot of Hebrew scholars, you'll find a lot of Christian scholars where they say, well, we don't know if, he, if, if David took four or five stones. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The number four and the number five are significant in this. You know why? Because according to the power of the three, six, and the nine, the number four and the number five are on the opposite spectrum of the number nine, the nanogram. That's why they say we don't know if he took four or five stones. Why David, when David picked up his stones. They're giving you the Fibonacci sequence. You understand? They're giving you the golden ratio or the fingerprint of God. They're telling you how divine stars are. Because it has that nine in it. You understand? The same swirl, the same nine, the fingerprint of God that twirls out of your head. The same fingerprint of God that you have on your fingertips. This is real knowledge of self. This is real knowledge of self that I'm giving y'all right now. Y'all are connected to the cosmos. Y'all are connected to astronomy. Y'all are connected to the nanograms. You understand? They wanted to usurp the nanogram as a symbol of the giants. Right? But really, we got to deal with the Nephilim, not giants. This is why wordplay is very important because they can deceive you in the wordplay. They say, oh, no, it don't matter what you're saying as long as you know what I mean. No, bro. No. Wordplay is everything. It's everything. It's what, ch it's what channels you to go down one dimension or another just by simply changing the spell, changing the word. It will take you down a whole different path of knowledge that don't even exist. If you're not careful, there's a difference between a giant and a Nephilim. So now, let's deal with the Nephilim. Now that we've explained the context, because I don't want y'all to get confused, we've explained the context of a giant and a Nephilim. There was no, there was no David and Goliath. It was only a giant star and a dwarf star. Okay? That's what that story is about. It's talking to you about the Fibonacci sequence. It's breaking down the, 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 the sequence of numbers to create that pattern, to create the, the, the divine order of what they called God. Right? Let's deal with the Nephilim. Nephilim and Jeboram. In most recent, in most translations of the scriptures, the word giant actually comes from two distant terms in Hebrew. Nephilim, the fallen ones, fallen angels called watchers. Jeboram, mighty ones, superhuman demigods, half human and half angel. The word giant actually comes from the Greek gigantes, which also means mighty ones, not necessarily large humans. Huh? But from this, we get the words giant and gigantic. You see, gigantes, this actually means earthborn, a distinction made to them denoting their hybrid misogynation of heavenly and earthly. From these Jeborim came forth demon spirits who possesses people trying desperately to be in the flesh again since, their, since theirs was destroyed in the great flood and burned to ash in Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay. 
So now, we understand that there is a difference between a giant and a Nephilim. Clearly. So now let's deal with the Nephilim. The Nephilim. Who were the Nephilim? The Nephilim were beings that were walking the earth. They were large. I don't want to call them humans at this point. There is inconclusive information. And we don't speculate on this channel. We do not speculate on this channel. But if you go in any walk of life, they will tell you that these Nephilim were procreating with our women, with human beings. Okay? Some of them revered these giants. Most people revered the giants. Or, I'm sorry, I got to get out of it too. Most people reveal, revered the Nephilim. Because the Nephilim stood at a minimum, at a minimum 12 feet tall. And you can find this all over, all over the planet. So what happened was, they had humans fighting against the Nephilim. They had wars. And you can find what we, what we call petroglyphs, all right? I love petroglyphs. Let me tell you why I like petroglyphs. Petroglyphs are pictures that people have drawn on the walls in caves, right? And the reason why I like these pictures, uh, or petroglyphs, it's because petroglyphs represent, to me, the common man. It represents the one who is not as mighty, right? So these people would draw stories, right, in an honest way of what they saw. You understand? They were not the scribes like you would find in Kemet. Petroglyphs, you can find all over the world, but you can find a lot of them in the Americas. And here's what some of them look like. Here we have an illustration of a petroglyph that was done over. And it shows a Nephilim or large being attacking smaller ones. And they're going at war. They were warring against one another. So we had the humans. As you see, one is, is all bloodied up and red. And the other one, it looks like it hit his leg and he's bleeding in his leg. You see, they were warring against the Nephilim. These are ancient inscriptions. You understand? And it was said that these Nephilim also had six fingers and six toes. I should say six fingers on each hand, six toes on each foot. And they drew honest depictions of these Nephilim hands. And these are all over the place. All over the place. And you can find these petroglyphs in only in caves, really. Why? Because that's where humans hid from the Nephilim. In caves. This is when you start dealing with Anunnaki, the Anak, the sons of Anak. This is where these stories start to come from. But it was also said that these Nephilim were raping the women, were raping the humans and having sex with the humans. And this is how we end up with people being born with six fingers on each hand. Even today, they're being born with six fingers on each hand. Six fingers on each foot. Because that DNA was usurped into their system. You see, these are the sons of Anak. These are the sons of the Nephilim. You see, there's a woman there from Brazil. You will mainly find this in the Americas. You will mainly find this in the Americas. The Americas was the stomping grounds of the Nephilim. I need you to understand that. These were said to be the beings that were digging out the Nile River. Okay? But what I want you to understand is they started having relations with humans why because they wanted to create a, they wanted to create a worker race to do the work for them it was the nephilim that was digging out what you see as far as the grand canyon the the the, the nile river they dug those out but the thing that they don't want you to know is that the nephilim was cool with black people Woo! 
the Nephilim and the people of Kemi was homies. Homies. They work with one another. They work with one another. You understand? And no, we can't call it a birth defect because they was here first. If anything, we might have been the birth defect. That's inconclusive. We're not here to give you no spookism. We're here to give you the truth. All over the walls, you see these Nephilim working with us on one accord, dressed like us. Huh? We was getting along with all the races. You understand? All the different beings we got along with. We got along with the, the, the pygmies, or I should say the twa people, we got along with them too. Huh? Don't play with me. See what they do? Don't get it confused. Don't get it confused with these type of glyphs right here. You see? Because here, this is a human being, but this is one, he's just creating a statue. You see that? He's just polishing a statue. That's different. That's different. Don't get it confused because that's how they're going to try to give you the okie doke. These are the ones that you can't deny when they're walking hand in hand and you know that those aren't deities. You understand? These aren't deities. These are humans. They are, they are human-like, I should say. You understand? We was cool with them. And we work with them. It coincides with the epic of After the High Seas Tablet WB62. Where these beings were digging out tunnels. And they wanted to create a race to help them do that work. And they passed down the divine knowledge of the plane. And how to do the work. You understand? That was the Nephilim. Or which they called the sons of God. Right? The mighty ones. They call them the fallen ones. Why do they call them the fallen ones? Why do they call them the fallen ones? I'm going to tell you why. Because when they came out the mountains. And we was working with the Nephilim. The first people that they took. The first people they had to take out was the Nephilim. And you can find the petroglyphs of that. Check that out. Or the white man going and killing them. Huh? This is where you get the stories of Gulliger's, Gulliger, Gulliger's Island and Gulliger's Travels. Where you got, got, got the little men killing off the giant. Huh? The Nephilim was our peoples, yo. That's a fact. You can find many drawings of them. Running up on the Nephilim and overpowering them. Chopping down the Asherah trees, the large trees that they needed for oxygen to even survive. They became weakened over time. Because when they came out the mountains, they was right there. They was right there next to Mount Maru. And they chopped down them poles. So now we have less oxygen. Ain't no way a Nephilim can survive in little oxygen. They need the oxygen, bro. So they came out. And they started defeating the Nephilim. They started even har harvesting body parts. You see? You see? They even had some of our people joining with them. Killing off the Nephilim. And as you see here, they're taking the body parts. And they're putting them in these cart-like structures. They're putting them on boats. You see that? On, on, on barks and they're taking the body parts and transporting them could be for whatever food because some of them was cannibals you know what I'm saying they took out the Nephilim y'all you see these petroglyphs they honest because they come from the regular human the regular human being the one that didn't have the power that didn't have the hierarchy of, of scholars and kings threatening to cut your head off not only did they draw human beings like that, taking out Nephil Nephilim, but they also drew human beings with large dinosaur-like creatures, showing that we lived during that time. They like to separate the large creatures or beasts and dinosaurs from when we were actually here. We was, we was here, bro. We was here. You can find these stories of the Nephilim everywhere. Everywhere. You go to Sumer, you're dealing with Gilgamesh, you're dealing with Nimrod. You see? They said that Gilgam Gilgamesh stood at 12 feet tall. 
here he is clutching a lion. A full grown ass lion and he got a lion around his neck like it's a pet cat. Huh? These were the ones that was defeating and these were the first kings. These were the first Nasut. It was these bad boys right here. And we was warring against these bad boys from the jump. That's what happened. You see, to give you an idea of how large they were, here you have a regular human being's jaw and a Nephilim jaw side by side to show you how massive they were. Here you have a tooth of a Nephilim to show you how massive they were. The Nephilim had two rows of teeth. They had two rows of teeth. The dental problems that we have now, when we have teeth growing behind teeth, that's the DNA of Nephilim within our bodies still. You understand? So when you have that second row, some of you might have teeth that are a little awkward, a little off. Chances are you got some of that Nephilim in you, bruh. That's why it's growing like that. You understand? You can go back. I remember when I used to go to the library as a kid, they used to have what they call a um, info track. Info track. Info track is what we have now or what we call the internet. But InfoTrack was the bomb because InfoTrack, it had real newspapers. It was real actual newspapers on film, on like Fujifilm. And you could look through it and see old uh, newspapers. I used to love it because I used to go and look up the Titanic. I was obsessed with the Titanic and I would go and look at the newspaper of the Titanic of the day when it crashed. You understand? And you could find articles like this. Where they show where they found a lot of these Nephilim bodies. When they killed the Nephilim, they would put them in mounds. And right here in the States, right here in the States, they would put them in these large mounds. Wisconsin was one of the main states where they found a lot of these bones. Okay? The discovery of several skeletons of humans, of human beings while excavating a mound at Lake Delavon indicates that a here to for unknown race of men once inhabited southern Wisconsin. Information of the discovery was brought to Madison today by Maurice Morrissey of Delavan, who came here to attend a meeting of the Republican State Central Committee. Corridor Charles II Brown of the State Historical Museum will investigate the discoveries within a few days. You see, upon opening one large mound at Lake Lawn Farm, 18 skeletons were discovered by the Phillips brothers. The heads, presumably those of men, are much larger than the heads of any face which inhabit America today. From directly over the eye socket, the head slopes straight back and the nasal bones protrude far above the cheekbones. The jaw bones are long and pointed, bearing a, a minute resemblance to the head of the monkey. The teeth in the front of the jaw are regular molars. There were also found in the mounds the skeletons, presumably of women, which had smaller heads, but were similar in facial characteristics. The skeletons were embedded in charcoal and covered over with layers of baked clay to shed water from the sepulchre. So we killed them, and they put the charcoal on them, they put the clay on it, and it preserved them somewhat. You know, they wanted to make they 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 wanted to make sure that them Nephilim was dead. See, before they came at us, they couldn't come directly at us. This is why the story of David and Goliath, it kind of parallels that story. You understand? Because that was a marvelous feat for them to take out the Nephilim. They couldn't do nothing with Kemet until they did something with the Nephilim because the Nephilim is the ones that were responsible for all of Africa and all of the, the, the irrigation systems that we had of those rivers. They, they made us according to that. And that's what you'll find in the epic of Atra Hasis. That story is in there. You see? This is why they don't want you going into Nineveh. This is why they don't want you going to the cities of Ur. To let you know what was in there. Because that's where those stories are. The Nephilim stories. You understand? 
This is why they tell you Sodom and Gomorrah. All, yeah, that, all that got destroyed. Yeah, you're damn right. That was one of the first things they did. They had to run up in there and destroy that before they could deal with Kemet. Because the Nephilim wasn't going to have that. But by then, the Nephilim was so weak because they, they went for the trees first. The Asherah poles. They cut down all the trees. They depleted the oxygen on the planet all over the planet first. You understand? And they became weak. They were large, but they were slow and weak by that point. They had messed up the vegetation and how they ate. We got to talk about their story first. What happened to them? You can't just wipe, wipe out a whole race of beings like that. You got to take out their infrastructure. You got to take out their habitat, which they still do today. That's how you wipe out a whole race. That's how you wipe out, uh, it, it, how you make an animal extinct. It's the same way with human beings. If you take away our resources and how we eat, if you deplete our oxygen, if you take away our natural habitat, we will die. That's what they did to the Nephilim. So when we're dealing with the Nephilim, we cannot synonymously represent them as giants. Because they are two different things. You understand? Two totally different things. A giant and a Nephilim. These inscriptions you can find everywhere. This is the stuff that's going to be really hidden, man. This is the stuff that you're not going to find in a book. You got to be able to know knowledge on all different levels and piece your pieces together. You see, they wanted to change the symbol of the Nephilim, which is the nano, the nanogram, to the symbol of, of humans, right? Which is the six-pointed star. That's the symbol of Jewish faith. That's when religion comes into play. They adopted that. Okay? That's what you're dealing with when you're dealing with giants. Giants. Understand? Make sense? course so now with that being said with that being said shout out to Shiji Tolo Shiji Tolo Shiji Tolo is responsible for the music that we did this morning he's responsible for the record that you was hearing he has an album out it's called Pan Panther Party I want all y'all to go out check that out it's on iTunes it's on Google Play all the necessary sources to go and uh, pick that up dope dope conscious album and uh everybody that that uses that there's a promotion on my fee everybody that goes and buys it there's a promotion on my fee where you can get it at 20 percent off i believe by putting the lighthouse code in there um so i'm going to post this on the facebook feed as well where you can find that also you can find uh incense and karma sutra that's my that's my records uh incense karma sutra you can find miss Sealy's note and you can also find frequency uh on itunes you can cop those singles if you'd like. Uh, we have Ashe coming out real soon. For those, I know many of you have been asking about Ashe and Litho. We'll be dropping Ashe and Litho uh, as well. So you'll be able to cop those songs. Okay. Shout out to everybody that um, is copping their power bracelets. Power bracelets are $50. If you donate $50 to the Lighthouse PayPal, JamarMilton at gmail.com. Or through Cash App, JamarMilton at gmail.com, you will get a Lighthouse Power Bracelet. There are two-tone copper and brass. These power bracelets are great for meditation to get you on frequency, to get that non-ether swirl going. That's what we are using as our fundraiser is these power bracelets. And everybody that's on one accord vibrating with us, I appreciate everybody that's been sending them in. I mean, we have so many orders, so many people that's been supporting the lighthouse. I don't think y'all understand how deep y'all family is, man. I can't even post all the pictures that's on here of everybody that was, uh, you know, sending in their photos of them rocking their lighthouse uh, power bracelets. We also have the lighthouse T-shirts. The T-shirts we still have. They are twenty five dollars. Everybody who donates twenty five dollars or more to our uh, our PayPal will receive the lighthouse T-shirt. OK. Uh, let's see if I have one and I can show you all the lighthouse T-shirts. Got to do my shout outs this morning. We got to pay. We got to pay the bills. You know, we got to shout out everybody that's supporting the movement. Our movement is so large. <clears throat> now, as far as black owned businesses, this is the Lighthouse T-shirt. It says duality on the front. It's got the nines on the bottom. On the back, it says Lighthouse. Do I do I do I do I shout out to Coach Low Boner. She Bonar. She's the one that uh, does these T-shirts. 
and she's strictly doing it out the kindness of her heart so that we can raise some money so that we can get new laptops and things of that nature to run our infrastructure because as you know they keep trying to stop our fees when we talk about real things and we expose them you know they stopped us like four times yesterday so we're trying to raise up some money to get us a new laptop and some new infrastructure we get in the studio as well so that we could do some of our feeds uh in the studio so i appreciate everybody that's been donating like i said it's 25 dollars or more for a t-shirt 50 dollars or more for the power bracelet i also want to shout out brother anton hicks Brother Anton Hicks, he's the one that does these here. He's on Facebook. He does the unks, okay? Anton, if you're in there, if you're in the building, please put your your, your website down there so they can know where to find uh, your handmade, custom-made unks. He made my first unk for me. I didn't even have an unk, to be honest, before he gave me one. As far as as far as jewelry was concerned, he was the first one to send this to me, and I thank him for, for making me an unk. Um, also, we have the these these T-shirts as well, the Heyru T-shirts. Um, they're also done by CG Tolo. Um, and you can get these at 20% off as well by putting the lighthouse code in there. Um, you can find all that information on Facebook. He sent me uh, several uh, t-shirts. Um, the Hey Roo shirts. He's got other ones. He's got Kepara. He's got he's got a lot of he's got a lot of dope stuff, man. So we want to show him some love, show him some support. That's what we do here in the lighthouse, man. We're all about uh, black business and helping support everybody. Cause I rather y'all spend with each other. Uh, than to reach your hand out and spend with somebody that's that's built and built an infrastructure to oppress you. So every time you know you put your hand out, hopefully you have your power bracelet on your hand as a reminder. Every time I go, if I swipe my card, I'm, I'm reminding myself: Am I spending this with my people? You understand? Or am or am I contributing to the oppression of our people by empowering their government, powering white supremacy? And what where, where am I spending my money? Your money your, your money is where your heart is. You understand? Who are you spending your money with? You can join the Lighthouse, the Lighthouse group on Facebook. In the Lighthouse group, we are, we spending money with one another. That's what we're doing in the Lighthouse group. If y'all want to know what's so private about this group, we spending money. And we're not letting just anybody, I got I to gotta go over this. We're not just letting anybody into the Lighthouse group because we understand that there are powers that be that are trying to stop us. There's a lot of information. There's infinite information that I give you guys for free that you can access via Facebook or YouTube. But if you want to get in that lighthouse group, if you're trying to get in that group, you're going to first have to watch some videos to be able to answer two questions to get in the lighthouse group because we have to do that. We have to make sure that the people that we're letting into the group are people that are trying to build the group, right? And that are not people that are trying to just take. You understand? We have to let people in that are trying to build something with us. And we have built a beautiful network. Anybody will tell you that the people that are in the Lighthouse group, there's a lot of love in that group. Back and forth, nothing but love going back and forth and people uh, sharing with one another, trade and commerce, building one another up. A lot of the uh, knowledge that you see uh, are inspired by some of the discussions that we have in the Lighthouse group. So this is something that you want to be a part of. This is something that you don't want to miss. If you have a black owned business and you're not in the Lighthouse group, you are hustling backwards. I promise you, you are hustling backwards. Everybody in that group understands and they get it. They understand group economics and what it takes to build a community. And that's what we're doing in the Lighthouse group. So if you'd like to join that group, uh, go ahead and look for it on Facebook. Uh, it's, it's, it's plain and simply the Lighthouse, just as it's spelled. Um, and you have to answer those two questions. The answers to those two questions are in the videos that I provide. And you can simply just look for them on YouTube. They're all labeled. The, the, the All the YouTube videos are labeled uh, according to what I'm talking about. So you will find Find those answers in there okay so i want to shout out a couple of people that we have on the feed shout out to my moderators lakeisha james t cobbin everybody that's always here on time kv i see you peace queen i say who else we got on here queen latifah always on deck always holding it down monitoring the group as well i appreciate you queen so we are looking for more moderators as well because we don't want to overwhelm our, our, our moderators, we want to have as many moderators as possible uh, that are qualified enough to, you know, regulate these feeds so that they don't keep shutting us down. That's what we got to do. We got to we got to fight the moles. We got to cut these damn agents heads off, man. That's what we about. So with that being said, may the divine force in me greet the divine force in you. Do I 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 family. Peace. I shake.